couple of folks are asking about how to take pictures of deep space like begin to end they really wanted to see how i set this up so i will show you guys begin to end how to set up your telescope how to set up your mount how to take a picture of a deep space object so i actually wanted to take a picture of andromeda galaxy using this setup what you need in order to take a good picture of a deep space object is a mount that can track very well the mount is the key not the telescope not the camera if you have a, like a really good mount you'll start actually taking a pretty good picture all right so what is what is celestron avx mount right celestron avx mount is an equatorial mount so if you see on one side of this mount has a counterweight and on the other side it has a telescope it can move in two axis directions it can move in this axis and also it can move in this axis right so when the mount is tracking the stars and when these are locked it works like a clockwork like how your uh, watch not these ones like the ones that are analog they move pretty much the mounts does the same thing all they do is they track from east to west all the stars that are going this is east and this is west so when the object is going up in the sky it start when you point your object it tracks the object let's say it started tracking somewhere here right and then the mount goes up and keeps tracking right now what it is doing is it is moving this axis what this axis is called is an ra axis and it is moving that and it is going up and tracking it right and when it comes like somewhere like right here this is called called meridian on the top C consider this meridian is like an imaginary line somewhere on the top of the globe okay so once it hits that meridian it's going to stop tracking it doesn't go back anymore it comes back this way and then turn around and then it will go this way and it will point the same thing this is called meridian flip so every equatorial mount when they start tracking they track from east to west and when the object passes the meridian these will do a meridian flip and start tracking that object through this side now the object is moving west and now it is moving as it goes along until it sets in the west side that's how these mounts track the more precise the tracking is the better you get a picture i think now you understand why we need to do a good counterweight right so because these are tracking if i move this weight here you are putting more weight on this rod and then it kind of starts pulling it down so if you have a good balance on this mount it's not going to harm your the motor inside or it doesn't have the drag that it needs it needs a good balance on the ra side and it needs a good balance on the deck side as well both sides you need to make sure you balance your mount right so it has like two motors like this is the deck motor and this is like the ra motor they both operate simultaneously sometimes only one of them is working the, not the other one depends on uh, what it is doing but generally mo both of them are on always okay every mount so every mount will have a home position the reason why it has a home position is uh, let's see this is the home position for this mount and right here so this is the home position okay what does it mean inside the mount there is software written so if the mount is sitting right here and if it is pointing towards that side which is the north side right and if it is pointing to polaris right the pole star the mount roughly let us say and if i turn the mount on and if i say 
let's say go to uh, Saturn or go to Jupiter, right? The mount automatically tries to go because it knows where it is and then it tries to go where the Jupiter is. Generally, you will be pretty close when the mount takes you there. If you do a pretty good job, actually it will be in, on your screen or if you are watching on your eyepiece, it will be there in your eyepiece. That's how mount takes you there. So how do I do it? If you see these lines here, it's little uh, still sun is out there, so the, I'm not going into the sun. But you see here, there are like three uh, circles, right? So these three circles, if I put my tripod there, it actually points to the Polaris. I just mark them there. Uh, they're pretty uh, accurate, but they are not perfect. So you have to use like, you know, software or you use uh, some other hardware to make sure that you are going to polar and I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's talk about the DSLR setup. As you can see, this is like a mini telescope. This is Rokinon 135mm lens. Inside you will see a perfect lens, almost looks like a mini telescope and you don't want dust to come. Now that, that is, uh, this is the Rokinon lens, this works like a telescope. So we are going to use this lens to take a picture of Andromeda galaxy today. This is going to help me focus. You can actually turn this manually as well, no big deal. Now this is a DSLR camera. So inside the DSLR camera I have a SkyTech. CLS light pollution filter. This is called a clip-on filter. Okay, you can easily use like a tiny ballpoint pen, take it out, no big deal. It just goes in there and you can take it out, remove it. This is a Canon T4i EOS camera. You can use your DSLR camera like to take pictures of the uh, of uh, deep space objects. But if you have a Astro modified DSLR, I think you'll start taking better pictures. But for taking the picture of Andromeda Galaxy, you really don't need like an Astro modified camera. You can just use your camera right here, right? All you have to do is uh, connect That's it right make sure this is secure okay I'll put a link for this Orion dual saddle you don't need like both the DSLR camera and the CMOS camera same time I just do this to make sure I take like really wide angle and a wide angle picture same time you can just have like one saddle and uh, get it going but I just wanted to compare the DSLR with the dedicated astronomy CMOS camera this is ZWO071 I wanted to kind of put them side by side uh, for us to get a better understanding either case I didn't use a telescope at all so let me explain the various components of this telescope the small DSLR scope that we are building. So this is a 16mm lens. Uh, typically you can use this kind of a lens to take like a wide field Milky Way kind of pictures. This is Rokinon 16mm 2.0 lens. Okay. Now uh, you place the lens on one of these uh, Celestron Universal Dovetail. Uh, with with like rings so you can actually see these are pretty easy to take them off so this is the lens the Rokinon lens and you will see the Rokinon 16mm right now this is the next component okay so this is uh, ZWO adapter on one side of it is it will actually 
connect to your DSLR lens and on the other side it has this M42 kind of a thread so this one you can connect your uh, CMOS camera to it right so and inside I put like a 2 inch filter so this is uh, a small eBay filter that I bought just to cut the light pollution off and also bring some nebulosity out so I'll put in links for these and once you just thread the filter inside make sure that these are threaded correctly put this one right here It's actually easier to remove and connect the camera to it as you can see it will thread like this so now you just created a small telescope that will take pictures of uh, Milky Way okay so as you can see here so this is your F stops. So right now it is at, at F2, 2.8. Uh, I want it to be in like somewhere in that 4 kind of range so that I can take our 4 or 2.8 kind of range uh, to take a good picture of Milky Way. I don't want to be at 2 or I don't want to be at 4. So I'm like somewhere in between. Okay.